I want to introduce Pastor Phil Roop, fresh to us from Bethel Assembly of God Church in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Amen. Thank so you. So active in our uh, in our community. We welcome you, and if you would give us our invocation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Gracious Father, thank you, God, for the beautiful day you've given us. We look around and see summer transition into fall, and God, it's been a wonderful day. So tonight, God, we ask for your presence and your wisdom, God, as this council makes decisions for our city that impact us daily, God. Thank you for bringing us here safely, God. I'll, I'll take a special thanks for that, God. We take a moment, God, to pray for our national leaders, our state leaders, to pray for our, our military, God, for blessings and protection upon them, God. We pray for this council, God, and Mayor Redegar as he leads this council and our city manager as they lead this meeting tonight, as they deliberate and make decisions for us. We pray for our police department and Chief Blair, for our fire department and Chief Ennis, for our sheriff department and Sheriff Jordan, God. And we pray, God, that you would give safety and protection, God. That's been a big concern of ours for this city in recent months, God. We pray for protection and direction, God, and wisdom, God. Thank you, God, for those who provide that for us, God, in this city. And God, we pray for peace and provision and prosperity for our citizens. Bless this time tonight. We pray that in the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Now, if you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'll call to order the Cape Girardeau City Council. Uh, this is our September 22nd. 2014 meeting. Thank you all for being here. Roll call, please. Wayne Bowen. Here. Victor Gunn, absent. Mark Lanzotti, absent. Shelley Moore. Here. Harry Rediger. Here. Coretta Snyder. Here. Joseph Luzoro. Here. Okay. Uh, council need a, a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. We have a motion uh, on the floor to uh, remove item 27, uh, which is bill number 14-147 uh, from the agenda in its entirety. Is there discussion? Those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Now, uh, a... a um, See, did you had you moved for the adoption agenda as with the postpone? With the postpone. Okay, now I need a now I need a motion for adopt the agenda as as uh, it has been adjusted. So moved, so moved by Snyder. Second. Seconded by Azura. Uh, Mayor, do you want to postpone items 33, 34, and 36? We can do that when we. We do that then. We can do that then. Okay. Any. Um, Discussion? Those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Now I'd like to have Mr. Cert enjoy, uh, join me up at the uh, front of the council chamber this evening. Jim, Mr. Cert is Jim Watkins for our presentation and proclamation. Jim, thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Mayor. That's a good name because I think a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cert, we're very proud of what you do for us. This proclamation is whereas National Preparedness Month with the theme Resolve to be Ready creates an important opportunity for all residents to pre prepare their homes, businesses, and communities for any type of emergency, including natural disasters and potential terrorist attacks. And whereas investing in the preparedness of ourselves, our families, our businesses, and communities can reduce fatalities and economic devastation in our, in our communities and in our nation. Whereas the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Ready Campaign 
Citizen Corps, the City of Cape Girardeau, and nu numerous other agencies are working to increase public activities in preparing for emergencies and to educate individuals on how to take action. And whereas emergency preparedness is the responsibility of every citizen, and all citizens are urged to make preparedness a priority and work together as a team to ensure that individuals, families, and communities are prepared for disasters and emergencies of any kind. And whereas all citizens of Cape Girardeau are encouraged to participate in citizen preparedness activities, such as our Community Emergency Response Team CERT program, and asked to visit the website of the Ready Campaign at ready.gov to educate themselves, take more active roles in their communities, and become more prepared. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Harry Rager, Mayor of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, do hereby proclaim September 22nd, 2014, as National Pre Preparedness and the whole month of September as, as National Preparedness Month, and encourage all citizens and businesses to develop their own emergency preparedness plan and work together toward creating a more prepared society and witness thereof. This set 22nd day of September, Harry Rager, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you for all you Thank do, you. and uh, <laughs> we do uh, need to be prepared and proactive when it comes to uh, disasters rather than reacting uh, post-disaster. Yes. So thank you for all your work. Thank you. I think a lot of people don't, or a lot of citizens don't understand what the CERT program but Mr. Watkins, could you explain that, that to everyone a little uh, further? I would be happy and honored to. You might be, do, and you could do some recruiting right now. Well, since we have our CERT class starting tomorrow, <laughs> this is a very good time. Yeah. Uh, CERT, Community Emergency Response Team, is a national program started in Los Angeles about 1988. And thanks to Captain Paul Breitenstein and Assistant Chief Mark Heschheider, brought the program to here about 1991, 92, and started programs in Southeast Missouri. Uh, it's continued and grown. Uh, this CERT Alliance is now responsible for 13 counties in Southeast Missouri. So we, we have big shoes to fill. And this program is one that is mainly for citizens. It is everyday home, everyday work, everyday wherever you are, to think that mindset that be prepared, whatever may happen. Ice storm, snowstorm, car crash, I, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Uh, but just being able to understand what to do, how to do, and have some things ready to go. Uh, I have handouts on the back table about the disaster to go bucket. Uh, the questions and answers in that, uh, I do presentations, uh, takes about 30, 30, 30 to 40 minutes, and I do presentations for anything, everything on that, and answer people's questions individually. The CERT program is a 20 hour, so it is a commitment. Uh, we generally do it on Tuesday mornings from 8 to 12, five Tuesday mornings in a row. That way people can leave work. Uh, employers many times realize that their employees need to keep the company functioning. So if they're prepared at home, they understand that their employees can come back to work, get the paycheck, keep things rolling. That's what it is really designed to do to help us at home and continue our lives as normal as possible. Uh, we, we, it's not limited to that time. Uh, we'll do weekends, we'll do whatever it fits the people's schedule. Do you still do it up at the university? Uh, the present time, we are using the Cape Trotter Public Health, County Public Health building as far as our classes. We do. I have my card. Yes. I need. <laughs> I probably need some retraining, but it is. It's. It's a great program, and you're then you're certified to, right. maybe to put on the hat or whatever when there is a disaster to help others. Yeah, 
and the recertification and retraining is eight hours. So we generally work that in one Saturday. Okay. But it, it's just a, a and I, I highly recommend it. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really designed for the the people. It, it's, and as far as I can't say enough good things about the Cape Fire Department, their city of Cape. Uh, wouldn't be here without them. Uh, also, Homeland Security, the Region E, they fund us through Homeland Security grants. Uh, and it's free. The training is free. You can't get any better than that. Uh, at one time, we were able to give away packs and things. That money's gone. But we still provide the training for free. So we need at least 15 people to take the 20-hour class, and we'll go wherever and do whatever we can. <laughs> it's a great program to offer our citizens. Very good, Jim. Thank you very much, thank you. and thank you, Loretta, for uh, helping bring that to the, the attention. Communications and reports, uh, Council, and I was uh, one of several that attended a, a block party on the, in South Cape. Um, there's a lot of great leadership from Councilman Moore, Shelley Moore, uh, last Saturday, and I would like her to uh, to uh, develop that uh, on uh, what happened there and, and, and what it brought it about. I think, uh, and I would commend uh, Councilwoman Moore for her leadership in uh, in engage helping to engage uh, residents in, the, in in that area, and I think it's working. And I uh, give you, uh, Councilman Moore, uh, a lot of credit there. So I would like you to uh, uh, give a detailed report on, uh, on last Saturday's functions. Yeah, uh, the Cape Leaders Alliance Partnership is a group that started in 2010. Um, my late husband uh, was the founder of that. And at that particular time, our goal and mission was to um, uh, bring different opportunities to the citizens in Ward 2 and Cape Girardeau, Missouri, totally whole. And so that's how it got started and we wanted, we were community minded. And after the deaths, um, we set up, we had meetings and trying to find out what would be the best thing for the city of Cape as a whole and Ward 2. So the group decided that the best thing right now from here in the the cares of the people was to address issues that were not necessarily not out there, but not necessarily they felt that they could go to and be, able, you know, get the information that they needed. On the eve of the deaths, we concluded once again that we needed to have uh, a relationship with the city officials and the community to come together and get an understanding because without an understanding you really have nothing to build upon. So we came together and we decided that the best thing was to do was to bring it to the people instead of asking uh, them to come into a building and all this kind of stuff. We thought keeping it in the open would be a best, the best thing to do. So we decided to, um, <clears throat> we had a meeting with the uh, city officials, the chief of police, uh, the city manager, the mayor, and assistant uh, city manager, and a lot of things came out of that meeting. Uh, a lot of questions were asked and a lot of answers were given. And so we thought to keep on going with the idea of bringing in the community together. Many people were doing many things, but we wanted to do something that would be uh, impactful and bring unification at the same time. So on Saturday the 20th, uh, we had the block party. Uh, we offered free food. We had, uh, like I said, all the officials there. We had different agencies there. Uh, United Way, the health department. We had Sadie's. We had the reentry group. Uh, we had the boys, scouts, and uh, the golden angels. We just had numerous uh, groups there to inform the people of what was really going on in Cape and what options and opportunities they have. I would definitely tell them about CERT because <laughs> I really, I didn't know much about it myself, but I would definitely push that. Uh, I was highly impressed with it. And so, and coming together, we had music and everything, 
and uh, it was a good, good, good uh, event. Um, they I had lots of good feedback. They want to have it again, and I told them, I said, you know, this is annually. We will not be <laughs> doing this every, you know, year, uh, three months, but we will do it annually. But we are going to continue to do things to bring change in war to it, a much needed change. Uh, the feedback was very positive. Um, very, they were very enlightened. Uh, the reentry program, the the information from the city, from the police chief, and all that they really, I got people, some came by my house again today. I got telephone calls. So it was a good uh, event. Uh, we will be doing more, uh, but not necessarily outside, but we will be doing more to bring unity and, and oneness to the community. Um, there is good people in war, too. Yes, and uh, they have a heart to bring change, a desire to bring change. And so we are working together with them, not uh, trying to you know, do anything, but just work together as a unit to bring change into our community. So I thank uh, you all once again for coming and supporting it and being there for them. That afternoon they had a march, and I went and marched with them uh, from, the, well, I met them at Mid, uh, Middle Street all the way over to Lincoln, so I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, so we went and we had a good time singing and walking and praying. But overall, the, the feel of things is really, really good, uplifting. Uh, I, I do know and I do feel in my heart that there <coughs> will be a great change. You know, it's just like anything else. When you till the ground, it's hard. <coughs> and the seed don't get out there. If you don't till the ground, the seed will not, I have a difficult time going into the soil. But once you till the ground, and then when you get all the debris and the grass out of the way, then you can have a harvest, and that's how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for again for your leadership. Uh, uh, something was brought to the attention of everybody there that uh, that day, and it, uh, it, it was a result of our meeting that we had uh -huh. the previous uh, three weeks before that we we gotten take taken action and had some results. And I'd like Chief Blair, if you would. Uh, address the uh, anonymous line and what, what, uh, what has transpired there with the first call in. Uh, thank you, Mayor. We, uh, through conversations with our first meeting, the, the community told us that they would like to have a phone line that is totally anonymous that we can't identify the caller on where they could call in and report crime or suspicious activity and know that they remain completely anonymous. Uh, we took that suggestion back and we, we implemented that. Uh, with it having been active about a week and a half, we got an anonymous phone call with some uh, report of some drug activity that was going on. Uh, they were able to identify the vehicle. Uh, our officers were able to get out there in a timely manner, find that vehicle, and uh, subsequently arrested two people for drug possession and also found a loaded gun on one of the people. So it resulted in two arrests just a week and a half into the tip line, which was something that was community generated. It wasn't, wasn't our idea. It was just members in the community wanting to take their streets back. Thank you very much. That was that, that some action, some, some reaction uh, really paid, paid dividends. Probably wouldn't have captured that without the citizen coming forward. Mm -hmm. So encourage all citizens to uh, communicate with, uh, with uh, staff, uh, be it fire, police, city, on any issue um, that we can, uh, can help with. Okay, thank you. Mayor, can I have a question? Sure. I think uh, people get access to that number because I, mean, I think that would be a great thing to get out to all the churches. It's, it's listed on our Facebook page, and I'll give you the number now also. It's 339-6313, uh, but people can go to our Facebook page as well and find that number on there and on our website also. Yeah, and I uh, appreciate you spreading that word through Ministerial Alliance and, sure. and, and so forth. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. That'd be great. I know a gentleman that can benefit that right now. I'll probably benefit at least Okay, great. <laughs> Very good. Very yeah, good. It, Thank you. Like I told the crowds last over the last few months is if you wait for shots to be fired, it's too late. Mm -hmm. 
You got to call us when you see something, and that's exactly what they did. They saw something a little suspicious, made a phone call, and it made a difference. And that's that's what we got to have. So thank you for spreading that. We're we're planning on some other things uh, to to make some cards and things to uh, to spread. Maybe some magnets uh, uh, as well. But yeah, get that out. And we so much appreciate it. I think that will pay big dividends in the in the months and years ahead. Uh, I attended uh, the annual meeting of the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative in New Orleans last week. That's a, uh, a relatively young group of uh, 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 mayors, not young mayors, just a young group of mayors, <laughs> that, that uh, is only three years, the organization is only three years old, and, but we've made, uh, we've made uh, some progress and we've, we're, we're getting ourselves educated and reacting on uh, managing uh, the river. Uh, with economic development, with recreation, uh, with uh, flood control, uh, managing floods, managing drought, uh, ecological issues, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one of the hot topics um, there uh, last year and, and particularly this year with the coming of the new Panama Canal in 2016, we have a tremendous economic development opportunity with container on barge. Uh, coming up the river out of the port of, uh, of New Orleans. Um, I'm very excited about that and I'm very excited about the potential for Cape Girardeau in this, uh, in this case and we're taking some action uh, as a group uh, to be sure we uh, are on the roadmap for that. And 2016 is coming very quick, quickly and uh, uh, it, is a, it is a tremendous opportunity for us uh, in economic development. A lot of other issues, but we meet annually and, and have a voice in, uh, in government and uh, in, 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 in states and, and back in Washington also. So looking forward to the future there. So I was unable to go to uh, Missouri Municipal League. This will be the first one that I miss since, uh, since I was elected uh, four and a half years ago. Uh, but uh, staff, some staff went. I think our assistant uh, city manager, Molly Hood, went. and. Uh, Councilwoman Snyder went and Councilman Uzura went. So I would like to get your uh, take uh, between the two of you on uh, uh, and, and report on uh, Missouri Municipal League, if you would, please. Well, as usual, the uh, conference, the Missouri Munis Municipal League uh, has every year. Uh, it was well organized and educational and inspirational. Uh, Plenty of good sessions, and it was at the new, fairly new St. Charles Convention Center, one of which uh, we would like to duplicate in Cape Girardeau. Uh, I guess I would mention uh, several of the sessions that, that I thought were very educational. One was about magistrate courts. There we had three judges there about some of the new things that they are dealing with and how they've solved some of the problems. Uh, went to a good session about the EPA and the DNR, about the upcoming regulations and what they mean to us. And one other one, I re oh, cultural diversity, which was really good. Uh, but uh, didn't, I don't think I missed any of the good sessions. And uh, it, it's always a, a valuable meeting to any council member. Your first, uh, your first time, Councilman Azura. Yeah, so it's hopeful to me because I'm recently elected. First time. <laughs> so I uh, attended the the educational ones that perhaps Loretta's attended to nine or t nine or ten times already. <laughs> but they discussed budgeting issues and issues affecting the state legislature. Uh, one thing that was noteworthy was um, one of the sessions was on the revitalizations of downtown, and I was downtowns in small communities in Missouri, and I was pleased that Cape Girardeau was listed for uh, making s substantial progress and, right. and what a lot of small communities would like to see happening again, so. Good. Yeah, it was excellent. Okay, very good. Uh, one more uh, from myself, and that is not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, Thursday night and into the weekend will be the uh, premiere of the movie that was made uh, 
substantially in Cape Girardeau last year. They spent, 20th Century Fox spent about seven weeks here in the September and October last year, and it will premiere uh, next week on uh, October 2nd through the 5th and be ongoing. There's a lot of hype about it. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, experience for all of us and trying at times, but I, uh, this is coming to, uh, to a conclusion now with the premiere and once again want to thank our, our staff, uh, particularly uh, fire police and, and our, our, throughout all of our city Public staff works. because Public Works, yeah, uh, is they had to jump when they uh, called and many times they didn't call until they needed it about five minutes. And uh, needless to say, all, everybody had their own work to do, but they really responded and I want to thank uh, everybody for their efforts there. And although it's been a year ago, it's still recognized as, uh, as a job well done, and, uh, and thank you for that. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, any other? Wayne. I want to uh, uh, remind anyone who might be interested that the uh, fire department is hosting a Citizen Fire Academy. Uh, October 25th. It's not too late to register. I'm planning to submit my own uh, form if, I'll, if I'm accepted into the academy. Uh, it's a full day exposure to what the fire department does, including a chance, I understand, to actually fight some fires. So that should be, should be interesting and fun. And I think it's consistent with what we've talked about already tonight about citizen engagement on, the, on public safety and helping, helping understand and promote um, overall safety in our city. So I appreciate the fire department putting it on and, again, encourage people to, to sign up for it. Okay, very good. Any other? Wayne, you were, uh, you were training, weren't you training for that with that the half marathon you ran? <laughs> Something like were, that. Were yeah. you out there with that? That was, uh, you had some staff out there too. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, but I can't get you to talk about that, huh? <laughs> right, so, okay, uh, I will. I want, I want to thank also the, the fire department, police department, parks and rec yesterday for their help with the uh, Cape Girardeau Roadrunners uh, half marathon and 5K. It was a great race. I, I I ran it. Uh, I don't say I ran it well, but I did run it and uh, appreciated seeing the city staff all along the route cheering and providing security and helping make sure that event was successful. And it was a great event. Lots of people from outside of Cape Girardeau, from outside of Missouri. I saw license plates from Kentucky, Indiana. Um, uh, I think I saw one from Texas at the Osage Center. So I think that was a great, uh, a great event. Beautiful weather. Some people ran fast. So it was a, it was a good event. <laughs> Very good. Anyone else? And uh, staff, and, and by the way, uh, uh, our city manager uh, uh, was unable to go to MML this year because he was in a city manager's meeting in North Carolina? Yes. In North Carolina, so you probably have a report on that, but so any, any uh, report from staff? Um, I may ask uh, Molly to uh, add to the reports on MML. Uh, I'll uh, quickly uh, talk about uh, a couple things. One of them, uh, ICMA in, uh, is always a great experience because you get to measure yourself against other other cities. And um, like uh, Joe said, it's really nice to have things that our city has done that uh, that other cities are aspiring to do. And uh, so that's always a good feeling, and it's a good feeling to to have them uh, bemoan how their council can't agree on anything and they can't get anything done and and we get things done. We move forward positively as a city. Doesn't mean we all have the exact same idea, but we all have the exact goal of a better city in mind, and we're moving in that direction. And they complain about their staff and how they don't have qualified staff, or their staff doesn't care. And I say, yeah, I don't have those problems. And those are big problems, because we have staff that not only is professional and does their job, they care about what they're doing, and they care about the citizens, and they care to go the extra mile because they want our city to be better. And so what a great position we're in. And, uh, and so it's gratifying from that. And you get some good ideas as well. We, I got one of them, a, a citizens, uh, some people have done some work on a citizens academy, which is kind of bringing together the fire, the police, and the other. So that might be something we might look at. And, uh, and I've got some other, other things too. But, uh, but it was a great experience and, uh, and one that, uh, that I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, really uh, Chief Ennis in his, in his um, uh, uh, way of deferring any kind of praise, of course, and, and Jim did deserve to be here tonight. We're glad he's here. But, but uh, Chief Ennis and, 
and, uh, and our assistant chief Hashider have been working hard on preparedness in this last year. They've worked really hard at, at uh, beginning to update our plans and they've got a committee together that's working on that. They've identified, they identified early on some really critical things like, like sirens that we needed and, that, and we've got those funded and, and, put, to, and put up. Uh, you know, you look at what happened to Joplin and having those additional sirens is critical to the safety and preparedness. Um, they, uh, again, worked on, on uh, emergency plans um, and, and training. We've, they've identified some training that our, our employees needed, uh, the ALICE training, um, and, and just moving us forward in that direction and, and keeping it on top of mind. And so they've still got some work to do, but uh, we've been approaching that in a holistic way. And I wanted to recognize Chief Ennis and their folks for, for doing that and, uh, and moving us forward because as well as things with, with everything else you have to do, you don't want to take the time to prepare for something that you hope never happens, but you need to. And uh, thank you for doing that, Chief. Well, sir, if I just add on to that, and that is just uh, another guy and I, the, the department no. heads. Absolutely. Uh, we part of Alice Training, uh, Parks and Rec, Public Works. We, we probably have had the most receptive group of people towards uh, emergency management that we've had in a long time, and that, that has really helped me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, well, so I said, you can't, you can't compliment him. You know, he, has, he, has, <laughs> he has to defer it to somebody else. Comment back to my meeting in, in New Orleans. Uh, uh, many of the mayors have experienced the mayor of New Orleans and, and, and the people in that Baton Rouge area and, and the people up and down the river that experience serious flooding that we haven't experienced uh, because of, uh, of our preparedness that we have undertaken years and years ago. But the, the thought that rang all the way through all of these conversations was that, that be more, pro invest money proactively. The government, city government, state government, federal government can throw money real quick at reactive, reacting to disasters, but it's really tough to invest money, and, it, and even in smaller amounts, to be proactive in, in emergency preparedness and disaster preparedness. That's just rang through and through in, in New Orleans, and here we're talking about it tonight, and you're talking about it from your standpoint down there, and we're doing a nice job. Again, commend everybody for taking proactive a uh, action in there, because it, it, it just reminded me of uh, many conversations we had around the table uh, down in New Orleans. So you're going to maybe have uh, uh, Assistant City Manager Molly Hood say anything oh, about right. uh, MML. MML? Thank you for catching that. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'll reiterate what Council Member Schneider and Uzaro said, that in, um, in addition to having some very educational and worthwhile classes on a variety of issues from budgeting to legal issues and whatnot, it's also just a great opportunity to meet with other um, city representatives from our region that, you know, we all work in relatively close proximity, but we don't often have opportunities to sit down and talk about what each other is working on and how we might collaborate more effectively on economic development issues, recreation, tourism, and things like that. So um, it was, I appreciated the opportunity to be able to meet some other people from our region. It was a good conference. Okay, we have uh, no public hearings this evening. Is there anyone here to peer board of the council on any item that is on the agenda this evening? Is on the agenda. Anyone? <laughs> Okay, seeing none, uh, Eric, a lengthy consent agenda. Yes, sir. Bill 14 123, an ordinance main schedule A of section 26 228 of the city code by amending speed limits on Kings Highway in the city of Cape Coral, Missouri, an ordinance main schedule A of section 26 228 of the city code by amending speed limits on Kings Highway in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14 127, an ordinance named Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the zoning of 301 and 305 Mill Street in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from R4 to RUND, an ordinance named Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the zoning of 301 and 305 Mill Street in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from R4 to RUND. Number 14 128, an ordinance named Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the zoning of 890 South Kings Highway in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from M2 to M1, an ordinance named Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances, City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by changing the 890 South Kings Highway in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, from M2 to M1. 
Act on the 14-129 ordinance of Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances to Cape Girard, Missouri by changing the funding of 902 South Kings Highway in the City and County of Cape Girard, Missouri from M2 to M1 and ordinance of Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances to City of Cape Girard, Missouri by changing the zoning of 902 South Kings Highway in the City and County of Cape Girard, Missouri from M2 to M1. On the 14-130, an ordinance making Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances City of Cape, Gir Cape Girardeau, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at Silver Springs Road and Shamrock Circle in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from C2 to R4. An ordinance making Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by changing the zoning property located at Silver Springs Road and Shamrock Circle in the City and County of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from C2 to R4. Number 14-131, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 219 North Mill Street for the demolition of dangerous building under the provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 219 North Middle Street for the demolition of dangerous building under the provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-132, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1751 Loose Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1751 Loose Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-133, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1022 Perry Avenue for the demolition of a dangerous building under provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of City Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 1022 Perry Avenue for the demolition of a dangerous building under provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of City Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-134, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 513 William Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under the provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 513 William Street for the demolition of a dangerous building under the provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-135, an ordinance authorizing city manager to execute an STP urban program agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the Independence Street and Gordonville Road intersection in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing city manager to execute an STP urban program agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the Independence Street and Gordonville Road intersection in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-139, an ordinance amending Schedule C of Section 26-121 of the City Code by changing the stop signs at the intersection of Broadway and Henderson Avenue in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance amending Schedule C of Section 26-121 of the City Code by changing the stop signs at the intersection of Broadway and Henderson Avenue in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-140, an ordinance amending Schedule H of Section 26-126 of the City Code by establishing traffic lights at the intersection of William Street and Sheridan Drive and at the intersection of Broadway and Henderson Avenue in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance amending Schedule H of Section 26-126 of the City Code by establishing traffic lights at the intersection of William Street and Sheridan Drive and at the intersection of Broadway and Henderson Avenue in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-142, an ordinance amending Article 11 of Chapter 11 of the City Code. Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding rooms to lease, let, hire, or rent, and an ordinance amending Article 11 of Chapter 15 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding rooms to lease, let, hire, or rent. Bill number 14-144, resolution authorizing the City Manager to execute a contract with Stantec Consulting Services, Inc. for the Sanitary Sewer Collection and System Rehabilitation Projects. Bill number 14-145, resolution authorizing the City Manager to execute an intergovernmental services agreement with the Southeast Missouri Regional Planning and Economic Development Commission for planning services in support of the Southeast Metropolitan Planning Organization. Bill number 14-146, a resolution authorizing the City Manager to execute a license and indemnity agreement with Lone Star Industries, Inc., DBA, Bootsy, Unisem, USA for improvements within the South Spring Street right-of-way in the City of Cape Garden, Missouri. Number 14-148, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a license and indemnity agreement with Tibbles Enterprises LP for improvements within the commercial street right-of-way in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-153, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute supplemental agreement number two with Crawford Murphy and Tilly Inc. for the construction phase services extension regarding the construction of T-hangers at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. Number 14-154, a resolution authorizing city manager to accept a bid from Whitewater West Industries LTD for the construction of new fiberglass water slides at the Cape Splash Family Aquatic Center and to execute a contract for the construction of those improvements. Number 14-155, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a contract with Active Network LLC for the provision of software licensing and professional services in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-157, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a release of lien for property located at 401 South Pacific Street under the CDBG program in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill number 14-158, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a release of lien for property located at 403 South Pacific Street. In
under the CDBG program in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 14-159, a resolution authorizing City Manager to execute two releases of lien for property located at 522 Good Hope Street under the CDBG Rental Rehabilitation Program in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Council, you've heard the uh, reading of the uh, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? Motion. So moved by Ozero. Second. Seconded by uh, Snyder. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Our new ordinances tonight, number 26, bill number 14-143, an ordinance amending schedule C of section 26-121 of the city of uh, code uh, by establishing a stop sign at the intersection of Spartec and Broadview in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. So moved by Snyder. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? We've removed item 27 from the agenda per uh, previous action. Number 28, bill number 14-149, an ordinance approving the record plat of 418 William LLC subdivision. So moved. So moved by Ozero. Second. And second by Snyder. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Number 29, bill number 14-150, an ordinance approving the right-of-way dedication Dedication plat of Megan Drive, first reading. So moved. so moved by Bowen. Second. And seconded by Snyder. Any discussion? I just want to say I'm, I'm excited to see we're accepting streets that comply with all um, guidelines from the city engineer. And if we would have done this 20 years ago, we would have had a lot fewer problems with streets. <laughs> so this is, this is great. Very good. Good comment. I support that, that, that comment. That's great. Any other discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Number 30, bill number 14-151, an ordinance approving the record plat of Rademacher subdivision. So moved. So moved by Snyder. Second. And seconded by Ozero. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Number 31, bill number 14-152, an ordinance appropriating funds for training and equipment ex ex Expenses for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2015 in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from an Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant and a Southeast Coalition Law Enforcement Grant. First reading. So moved, so so moved, moved. by Bowen. Second. And seconded by Snyder. Any discussion? This is a great yield. $204 uh, gets us 37933 for ATVs and gun racks and other equipment. Um, and I, I, I think... All the rest of the council will agree this is in addition to what we're currently spending, um, not something that will come out of what we're currently spending. So that's great. Great leverage. Yes. Great leverage. Any other discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Bill number 32 is, a, uh, is an ordinance that uh, is a, an emergency ordinance due to the uh, shortness of time to uh, apply for uh, a grant. So it is a... Um, it is an emergency and we'll need uh, five votes and we're five years, so we'll need everyone uh, supporting this one and I will read it uh, first, second, and third readings. Bill number 14-156, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a, straight, a state block grant agreement amendment number three with the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission to fund the construction and construction services of T hangar number one and taxi lanes at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. Bill number 14-156, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a state block grant agreement amendment three with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to fund the construction and construction services of T-Hangar number one and taxi lanes at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. Bill number 14-156, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a state block grant agreement amendment number three with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to fund the construction and construction services of T hangar number one and taxi lanes at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. I move that we uh, accept the reading, first, second, and third readings of Bill number 14-156. Motion by Snyder. Second. And seconded by Bowen. Discussion? And uh, like our city attorney to uh, uh, detail why this uh, qualifies for uh, an emergency uh, uh, timing and legal. Okay. 
I'd be happy to under uh, Article uh, 3.15 of the City Charter. One of the four criteria for using an emergency provision is when the uh, measure is one that will uh, act toward the immediate preservation of public health, property, safety, or morals. And this is one that would uh, act toward the immediate preservation of public property. And so for that reason, um, and it was stated in the ordinance that that is the reason uh, it is eligible for emergency readings and, and immediate uh, effectiveness upon adoption. Okay. And the, and the construction will um, fill a desperate need that we need down at the airport for those tea hangers. Okay, that need has been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, emergency is passed. Okay, appointment to the uh, Board of Appeals. And as the, we discussed uh, earlier, uh, it is going to be necessary to postpone uh, this appointment. I need a motion to the same. So moved. So moved by uh, Azura and seconded by uh, Snyder. And we will undertake uh, uh, that appointment at a, uh, at a later date. Uh, those in favor of postpone, aye. Aye. And opposed? And 34, an appointment to the Board of Examiners. And again, uh, per discussion of uh, uh, relating to further study of the Board of Examiners, uh, need a recommendation to uh, postpone this appointment. So moved by Bowen. Second. And seconded by Ozura. Is there any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Appointment to the uh, Cape Girardeau Goes Green Advisory Committee. And uh, the um, discussion there resulted in a uh, recommendation for Chris Mackey to become a uh, regular member and Michelle Otte uh, to become an ex officio so member. So moved. So moved by Snyder. Second. And seconded by Ozura. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? And appointment to the golf course, uh, golf course advisory board. And the uh, advisory board and Parks and Rec have recommended uh, a delay there. So again, we're asking for a uh, motion to postpone that for a future date. So moved. So moved by uh, Azura. Second. And seconded by Snyder. Any uh, discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, is there any other business to come before us? Boy, that's a long time. I guess Lanzati isn't here this evening. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved by Ozura. Second. Seconded by Snyder. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? We are adjourned.